everybody. This is Digging Maximus with Digging Maximus Talks, episode 127, is it? On YouTube. Um, thank you guys for listening to these episodes. Uh, some of these episodes, all of them, most of them, one episode. Uh, anything is appreciated, guys. Remember to like, follow, subscribe these episodes on YouTube and on Spotify, Digging Maximus Talks. Um, and if you want to make a small donation towards the podcast, there is a link you can click on my Spotify episode. It will take you to a spot where you can just make a small donation if you feel like it. And anything is appreciated, guys. So, um, I want to talk about two comedy shows I've been to this past week. And uh, I did go to a show up in Carlsbad. Great show, hosted by Walter Ford. It's at the New Village Art Center in the Carlsbad Village off of State Street. So, fun area. Great show. The headliner was Mika J. Um, great lineup, actually. I knew most of the people on the lineup. Uh, the only person I didn't know was Mika J. And I'm glad I got to see her. Um, so the show started off with Walter Ford, uh, kind of did his stand up while hosting, uh, you know, great stuff, uh, the usual stuff, him from being Indiana, um, uh, and then, you know, yeah, mostly stuff from growing up in Indiana and then, uh, talking about, you know, the advertisement, they only show pretty women as how they showcase California, but it's completely different from what is being advertised. So, um, I would say, uh, that's pretty cool though. Um, usually good stuff. Crowd liked it a lot. I've noticed it shifted the, the, the stage. It used to face the windows, but now it's facing an actual wall now. So everybody's looking forward to the wall and not looking forward to the window. So that's actually pretty good. I don't know if it makes it larger or longer, but it was a good setup. I liked it. Um, uh, let's see. I would say Walter's stand up while hosting. He did some crowd work, especially for a guy he was buddy buddy with, Manu, in the front row. We're not pretty well. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, Walter was a 8.3 out of 10. Great stuff, great crowd reaction. Then, um, first person that got up after Walter was uh, Melissa Wiseman, my friend Melissa. Um, she has some good stuff. And I guess she had talked to um, Manu. He was kind of a somewhat of a heckler, but also a nice guy. Uh, I don't know if every single person had addressed Manu in the front, but it's kind of obvious not to talk to him. <laughs> you can't miss him, and it's hard not to talk to him since he's just right there. So. Um, I would say Melissa did all right. Um, she was probably a eight point one out of ten for a comedy. Um, some jokes hit pretty well, um, and some didn't get quite the reaction. Plus, it was kind of a slight distraction with my new in the front, so. Um, so that was something, but I'm pretty sure that comedians have to deal with those kind of hecklers at shows anyway. Nothing new, I guess, but something to observe and talk about. Um, uh, so yeah, um, Melissa was an 8.1. <clears throat> I believe the next person that came up was Alan Henderson. Great guy. Uh, did mostly crowd work. Uh, talked about him being in a wheelchair and the stuff 
disadvantages and advantages like he's stuck on stage if there's a fire everybody will leave him behind you know he would ask two people like one would pick him up and the other would take his wheelchair but the real hero would be the one who would pick up Alan you know get hero pussy so that was super funny the crowd loved it a lot he was uh, 8.5 out of 10 honestly uh, that might have been the biggest reaction I've ever heard for Alan Harrison for her stand up so um then we also have, I believe, Cash. Cash was there. Uh, he did pretty well. Um, talked about him growing up, the, the many dialects he speaks, the dual citizenship that he has. Uh, he did a little bit of crowd work. He uh, he did get Satsuma Manu in the front row. Um, it was the funny part is about the crowd work when he talks about Manu is because when he asked how many people, single people are here and Manu volunteered like I did, but Cash said, of course you are single. Everybody laughed because, you know, when you identify a heckler who identifies as single, it's just kind of an easy thing to kind of talk about. So, all in good fun. Um, I would say Cash was... Uh, 8.45 for his comedy so that was pretty cool um and then uh we got our headliner uh by the way I brought my friend uh Venkata with me uh he's my friend's younger brother so you know close quarters close friends and stuff so reached out about what comedy I think is good and what shows I would recommend so uh honestly um you got to see a good show so uh the uh headliner Mika J I loved her set and she's a foodie like I am and she loves Korean barbecue like I do foods in general tacos wings I mean I love talking about that with her after the show and she talked about food she talked about Thai massages there was a guy a Thai massage guy by the name Tony he basically did the splits and used his balls to kind of massage her neck and it's the right size for this type of massage versus someone with the big balls because you can't do that with big balls I guess so that was super funny, and how she described it, it got everybody laughing. Um, if I was a comedian with my personality, it would be Mika J, honestly. That's how it would turn out. So, honestly, I think she did so well. I would say that Mika J was uh, um, easily a 9 out of 10, honestly. Pretty awesome. Uh, uh, so, uh, let's see. Um, after the show, I got to talk to Walter. I got to talk to Melissa, Cash, and Alan. And I introduced my friends to everybody. Um, you know, good show overall. I love coming there. And what's even great is that they had Handel's ice cream right after. So I got to get a vanilla caramel brownie ice cream in a bowl. Really good stuff. It was like a 8.75. Um, I would go there again, actually. And they have some benches you can sit at. And so I got to eat with cash. Mikata and Melissa and Pearl, yay! So, um, next show I went to, um, last night I went to the mic drop. I was in the gold room. Uh, Ali, uh, Dalimi, uh, he, uh, did his falafel tour show. He headlined his own show 
at the Gold Room, sold out. Great show overall from top to bottom, start to finish. Um, guess what? Walter Ford. <laughs> Walter Ford was hosting this one, so I got to see him back to back nights. Um, I think his girlfriend was there with him too, so um, she looked like someone that I know, one of my friends. Her friend Jackie, actually. Um, so, uh, so with this show, Walter started off, kind of did about the same uh, jokes as before, being from Indiana, uh, talking about how when he came out to California, because, you know, there's no family out here, and the way they advertise California, they always put the pretty girls at very uh, different places, notable places in California. <coughs> and, um... He kind of acted out uh, the zoo, women, and and their breasts on there, the PB, and then put, you know, uh, said the, the the burritos were vegan, and then start prancing around with their titties out or something. So, again, eight point, uh, eight point three five. I would say nice way to warm up the crowd then uh, they brought up Michael Red uh, great guy uh, he talked about uh, his the kids that he teaches and uh, and then he talked about uh, I guess one of the kids mom was a professional wrestler so he just so happens to kind of talked about the kid's mom and then uh, I would say that uh, this is probably the biggest reaction I've ever heard him get at all the shows he's been at so I would say he was a 7.7 .7 out of 10 for his comedy so I'm glad that he got a great crowd reaction because you know the guy deserves it and uh, it just takes the right, like, um, the right time in and the type of jokes and just, you know, paying attention as how everything goes together for that joke. And I think he's been working on it, so kudos to him. And uh, this crowd, you know, they recognize that. So, and uh, kudos for Ali for giving him a spot. Um, I believe the next person that went up. Uh, it might have been uh, Nick BK, maybe, I think. Um, or it might have been Stapna Iyer. But uh, let's say Nick BK. He uh, has that chant. It always gets the crowd warmed up and laughing. He talked about how his friend died with the antlers. That was super funny. Um, and honestly, uh, it, I just couldn't cra stop cracking up because how you describe how his friend was, was dying and like, um, uh, then the end of the antlers thing and then I just burst out laughing because, you know, I've heard of it, but then like, it keeps getting funny and funny then the crowd around me <laughs> starts to realize that too, so... Um, honestly, Nick is a great guy. Did pretty well. Crowd loved it too. 8.5 out of 10 for his. Uh, next up, I believe it was Sapna Iyer. She's at ER Doctor. And the, I noticed uh, it was mostly the same stuff. But um, the crowd really ate it up. They liked her a lot. Um, I would say she was also 8.5 out of, out of 10 as well. Um, Let's see. Uh, I believe there was a Mikey Perry. Uh, he works on the mic drop. Does most of the crowd work. And, <coughs> oh. and uh, well, we found out some, I don't know, tension between two friends who came together to for a comedy show who went to the Andrew Dice Clay show in the, in the main room and then came into the gold room. 
honestly, uh, <laughs> uh, it was, it was super funny because technically, uh, Mikey ran out of time, but, you know, he, he couldn't go into some of his normal jokes, but it's kind of cool how he just kind of worked the crowd and then got a lot of funny bits out of it, so easily 8.45 for Mikey, um, uh, and then I believe we have, um, I think your headliner, uh, Ali, came out with his, uh, um, came out with the, uh, what is it, like the, um, the head cover that he has, he has it in a lot of his reels that he does, uh, a lot of funny stuff he posts online, and he started by standing on the stool, um, I've seen him times before, but I would say this is probably his funniest um, stand up he did crowd work for almost like 15 minutes or something before telling a real joke but uh he always brings a lot of great energy the crowd recognizes that crowd love us so much honestly um uh, I would say Ali was like a 8.8 .8 out of 10 overall with his jokes crowd work and uh, uh crowd really just loving it including myself um uh, overall, I had a lot of great fun, um, uh, getting some pictures with everybody as much as I could, got pictures with Walter, um, uh, Sapna, Nick, uh, Walt, yeah, Walter, um, uh, Walter, Sapna, Nick BK, uh, Who am I missing here? Uh, and then uh, Mikey, and then leads right into uh, um, leads right into uh, Ali. So, um, it's overall a great show. A lot of great comedy. Um, a lot of great comedies for this past two days. But I want to kind of bring up something really quick here, though. So I I never actually got to see this ever before at a comedy show especially after a comedy show but so Andrew Dice Clay was performing at the mic drop same time as Ali was doing his show um the crazy thing about this about that is that so I I realized that some people from the audience need to use the restroom and including myself I need to use the restroom before I leave I mean, I have no problem leaving, and, like, I don't want to bother the other show, right? But, um, the staff had to block off the hallway to the restroom. My first thought was, okay, maybe if the doors were open and, you know, you see people walking back and forth from the other shows to this one, you don't want to have that distraction. I get that. But... In the hallway, there's another set of doors that blocks off the main room from the gold room. So the hallway is in between the two sets of doors. The doors to the doors to the main room and the doors to the gold room. That hallway blocks is in between the two. So you couldn't see the mic, uh, the main room from the gold room because not only is the hallway in the way, in in the middle, but like the doors do block your sight from the main room. But, from what I was told, Andrew Dice Clay has requested a special entrance where nobody can be in the hallway when he's about to come out in the hallway to the main room to his music and be on stage when his time is supposed to go. With that being the case, no comedian, no audience members can be in that hallway until Dice goes up and then you can go in. I I get it, but that is super crazy. People have to use the restroom. People need to get their stuff and go. Like, we're not going to wait forever. <laughs> and that's just, that's just crazy because I would figure that if you're a comedian who's been working at the mic drop, like, you get 
special privileges and you know and I would get that but if you're an uh, audience member I get that if you can't go in because of certain things happening with the uh, certain comics and doing certain intros and a reason behind it I mean I get it if it's good between comedians but like for an audience member not to go in I get that in a sort of way but the thing is you only have one set of bathrooms is in that hallway and so people need to go and the green room is right next to the restroom and people need to get their stuff and get going because we're not going to stick around because we all have to go home right but I didn't realize that Andrew Dice Clay was going to get this special freaking treatment and now I have another reason not to like Andrew Dice Clay like who ever requests that kind of stuff really I mean between comedians like there should be a kind of uh, we call it uh, camaraderie or whatever it's called a rapport of I don't know networking mutual respect between comics and stuff but to block off to have the entire staff at a comic club block everybody off just for one comedian no matter how good the person is like that's just crazy that's just freaking crazy honestly because like the comics that earned the respect of most comedy clubs and you get that special privilege because you're there to perform and like for me I'm not a performer but like I go and support all the comedy all the comedy clubs I promote it myself I take pictures and, and tag everybody I do it on my own like I don't get paid for it but to not have the actual comics or not like that headliner much less like audience members they can't access certain things because of one comic that's just crazy so and I can tell <clears throat> that certain comics after the show like they felt disrespected that I have a high praise for the mic drop but to just kind of set aside all that for one comic I don't feel that that's right if anything if you need to set up like a separate bathroom to have a separate entrance for like everybody else and if certain comics request a certain thing where they come out in a certain way you can't block off like necessities and essentials just for one person like, if you're going to do that, you either got to have a different spot for another set of bathrooms it's just for that, or you either tell the headliner they can't come out yet, and you either tell people to stay inside the bathroom, or, you know, Andrew Dice Clay just simply has to stay in a certain spot and then get ready to go in. I mean, you can't honestly be serious in asking a whole <clears throat> a whole bunch of people to hold off just for you. I mean, I get sometimes fame can be a lot, but sometimes at the same time, like, you got to be practical about this. You want people to want to come to your shows. You want to have the reputation of customers, audience members who want to come to a comedy club who uphold a certain reputation of being one of the best out there. They don't disrespect the fans, they don't disrespect the comics, and they don't give special treatment just for one comic. And put that above the other comics who worked hard to get to where they are now. So, honestly, I think that kind of rule should be, you shouldn't honor certain things like that. I mean, comics 99% of the time they like to kind of hang out in the back in the dark and if you finally show up your face you know you can literally just be in the back I don't know you could be in a in a shroud of some kind of shadow or darkness or something in the back of a room make the back of the room dark so that no one can see them right but you shouldn't block off the entire bathroom the hallway to the bathroom because of one person so Anywho, um, I'm going to stop talking about uh, this. 
Uh, my next episode, I'll probably talk more about food and sports. And uh, look, tune in for that. Remember to, uh, you know, follow up, subscribe somewhere here. Like the episodes. Tell your friends and family. Um, do the same thing on my Spotify podcast, Tiki Maximus Talks. Same titles for YouTube and Spotify. And, uh, you know, I need all the help I can get. Please donate or please listen or please subscribe or please follow or please like the episode. So anything helps. Hopefully make this thing a big thing. So, but if I make it big, I'm not going to, you know, block people from the bathroom. So, yeah. All right, guys. It's that time. Boom. Tiki Maximus signing off. Baby. There, guys. <laughs>